I hope you're all doing well. Video number six of the Eye for Nurse Pearls series. It's gonna talk about IVs and butterflies and blood draws and um, yeah. So that was probably the most fun skill I learned in nursing school and then the most frightening skill to do at work. Yeah. So just common things that I've seen in students in myself and then other nurses. So I'm hoping that these little tips help you as you start to practice and get more opportunities to insert IVs, blood draws, cultures, all of that. So first things first is obviously making sure it's the right patient that you need to try and go get an IV on, okay? Um, <laughs> identify the patient. Let's say if someone's like, hey, I need an IV in room five, that you're actually in room five, um, if the patient is in need of an IV and not that the nurse misspoke and you're supposed to try and get a, an IV in uh, room six. So obviously it's the right patient. And when you do anything, I want you to introduce yourself I'm Jeanette, I'm another nurse on the unit. I see uh, Susan needs help uh, with an IV. I will take a look and see if I can insert one for, for you, okay? Making sure, and for the most part, if they are able to communicate, oh yeah, she's tried over here, tried over there, go ahead and give it a shot or whatever. So obviously, right patient. Um, couple of things. Do not be fearful of trying. I've caught myself where I was so intimidated and especially in the ICU, we have a lot of patients that are really edematous or have fragile skin or have um, chronic conditions where maybe they've been in the hospital for many years, their veins are totally just not um, used up and not, you know, not good for sticks or maybe they just have that one good vein that you really can't like screw up. I was intimidated by all that. I was intimidated of causing harm, of causing pain. So I remember I would call, you know, the IV king and queen of the unit to come help me get an IV in. And I would observe what they're doing. And sometimes, you know, I started letting them know, I'm like, hey, I just want to watch you do it. I really, like, I've looked and I've seen nothing. Like, what can I do to help? So watch those people that you call to help you insert an IV. Have them talk you through what they're doing before they stick or anything. Feel what they're feeling for. That was probably the hardest thing that um, when I first started is like, is that a vein? Is that a vein? I don't know. I don't know. So the more you feel, the more you know what you're feeling for in the future when it's your turn to start an IV by yourself. And you can do that, like even right now, I have a vein right here, I don't know if you can tell. But um, there's no obviously tourniquet or anything like that, but I can feel what it feels like without that added pressure. Then let's say if you have a tourniquet, go ahead and you know practice on someone else, put a tourniquet on, go ahead and feel for it. You should feel it bouncy. Um, even my, my foot, I'm not gonna show my feet, but I have like some large veins there and I just tap on it. I just kind of get used to the bounciness that you feel when it's a vein or not. So tip number one, feel everyone's vein. Feel everyone's vein, your family's a vein, your patient's veins, uh, just, you know, practice, get your hands on someone's body and feel for veins. You don't have to poke or anything, you just feel for veins, get used to knowing where they are, follow them. So you know when you get a patient where it would normally go and then you can find out is it going there or not. Some people's veins, they totally just take like a U-turn. So feel for the veins, all right. And then, honestly, anatomy, go ahead and even if you have to print out a little picture of the anatomy of the veins and the arms, so you know where you're looking for, especially if they're a patient that you can't really feel well or you can feel it well in one area, just knowing that anatomy is very important because you don't want to do any blind sticking. So once you obviously gotten some experience with watching someone do it, um, feeling for veins, Make sure that you're using the appropriate supplies. So, and that goes for the appropriate supply for, let's say, butterflies, if you're just trying to get like a venipuncture for lab work, or if you're trying to insert catheter. Um, there's a wide range of catheters available, both in the gauge size and the length size of the needle, the catheter. And you want to make sure that you are, let's say, 
choosing the right one for the vessel you're going to go into. So your catheter size, your gauge size should be smaller than like the diameter of the vein you're going into. Does that make sense? So that will require you to obviously look at your supply room, look at your options, grab your options that are available and going in and assessing the patient to see where is a good space for them for you to insert an IV. Then you look, you can even put the, the catheter tip and just kind of on top of it and just like, okay, that looks like it fits. You'll start well. getting to learn. Like if it's a superficial vein, if it's like a 90 year old patient, you're, I really hope you're not pulling her hand. See what I'm saying? Um, you know, you can probably get a 22 in there, but a 20 is not good for everyone. And that's probably the one that you, everyone goes to, uh, but you have, that's why there's different supplies. You have to make sure you're choosing what's appropriate for your patient. So once you get that, obviously assess your vein. Does it look like it's a good fit? All of that. I want you, obviously, a septic technique, cleaning, uh, everything. If, if something falls, drops, use all new uh, supplies. You do not want to risk any, you know, giving them any bacteria uh, or any, any infections. No one wants to add that to their hospital stay, okay? What I used to, when I started doing more IVs, Let's say during my assessment, I am looking obviously at the V's that they have. Are they overdue? Do I need to take them out? Um, and let's say if they have one that's working well and one that hurts. Okay, I'm going to take this one out, but I'll need to come back and get a new IV on you because we do need one for backup. Okay, so even at that point, when I don't have anything, if I have a tourniquet in there, or even if they say their blood pressure cuff is inflating, I look. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna take a look. I'm gonna just take a look. I know I'll get some supplies later and I'll come in and do my, you know, my assessment and be and see if I can insert another IV. And you're looking. The number one thing that I realized that I was doing, I was rushing the entire process. Yes, like it feels like time is against you. And sometimes <laughs> on difficult patients, it's like, oh, it's 45 minutes just to get this blood. I realized that it does not help me if I am rushing the process and if I am too stressed about it. Um, when you're too stressed, you tend to act too quickly. And instead of kind of taking a couple deep breaths, maybe sitting down and looking at the person's arm or maybe elevating the bed, making yourself comfortable, talking to the patient, explaining everything and really letting the vessel, the arm for the blood to um, accumulate to give you the best shot available to getting the IV. Sometimes like, okay, I need to get an IV. Try to get on. Look, 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 feel, feel, feel. Okay, here we go. Uh, missed you it. don't want to do that. So now, you know, I'll look. I'm like, okay, what are we looking for? I'll look a couple of times before I even get my supplies or even start looking for sticks. And then if I feel, I'm like, okay, yeah, I feel like that's it. I do something else. I finish your medications and I come back when it's time. I go ahead and tie the tourniquet again and I'm going around that same area that I felt it before. Okay, yeah, that still feels like a good one. I, I'm really confident that there's one there. And then that kind of improves my chances that I will get the IV. Other things that I've learned to help with um, feeling the veins a little more, if you use a warm compress, that will also help. Um, lightly tapping it as well has helped. Um, I put a tourniquet before. Um, what I like to do is put a tourniquet over the patient's uh, gown sleeve, especially if they're older. The worst part I hear all the time is whether it's me, <laughs> well, the rubber being the tourniquet, pulling the hairs of the patient or pinching their skin. So having it right, obviously you want your tourniquet about, what, three inches above where you're going. Putting it over the clothing, or even I sometimes put gauze, like four by fours underneath. So when you tie and you obviously pull the rubber band, um, that's where you pull and kind of pinch the skin. So I put that on there just as a barrier so I'm not pulling their skin. Um, and that seems to kind of help. On top of that, for a very difficult stick, sometimes I'll put the blood pressure cuff on. And I guess there are some monitors out there that you can put, you can press a button and it tells the machine that it's for like a venipuncture, so it just kind of gives you an ability to adjust the pressure on it so it'll just inflate and stay there until you're done. Um, sometimes I just run the cycle and then I see the veins much better. Um, also just to make the entire process a little neater I will get a towel. Um, sometimes I'll get a pillow just to make sure that the arm is elevated and they're not moving it. Put a pillow, either a chuck 
or a towel underneath because sometimes it could be very messy or you're shaking and you can't get like your uh, your flesh connected to the actual catheter. Um, sometimes it's a mess, some people bleed a lot faster. So I've learned to do that just to make the entire process better because you don't want to change an entire bed because of, you know, you did a, a lab draw. <laughs> It has happened, but yeah. Um, so let's see what else I can help y'all with. So dangling um, the arm, let's say off of the bed or in a position where it's dependent so the, the blood pools. Sometimes, let's say on darker skin. What I end up doing, obviously doing all of that so I can make sure I increase the pressure and I can see, you know, hopefully see some good veins pop up. I use an alcohol swab and you can see the because of the moisture, you can see the shininess and you're able to better visualize the vessel. So that really does help, especially for darker skin. I've also used a vein finder, which is just like a little flashlight. Uh, I haven't used it in a long time, but if that's available, check your unit, that can also help. And then depending on your hospital, your unit, um, I've not technically been trained on, but the ultrasound machine. So sometimes I'll grab the ultrasound machine and go ahead and take a look at their arms and just see where the vessels are. Sometimes they're really deep and you can't really see anything superficial and then you can do like an IV inserted um, ultrasound. Anyways, you can use that ultrasound to insert the IV. Um, again, depends on your hospital and your policy, what they allow you to do as a nurse. Uh, follow that so don't get in trouble. Let's see what else. Even asking patients, sometimes they're like, okay, no, if you need blood, this one's good over here. Or for the IVs, they always go over here. That's probably the better vein. Um, Just a side note, when you're doing your assessment, uh, some patients may have a porta calf. And I remember there was one day that I came in, I'm doing my assessment and you know, she has like peripherals and all of that. And we're having to stick her all this time for blood. And I'm doing my assessment, I'm like, do you have a, a port? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, why haven't we been using the port? Anyway, so, if you find yourself in that position, go ahead and talk to physicians, you know, can you get an order to access the port and then follow your hospital's uh, protocol on accessing the port. Sometimes they pick nurses to come in or you can access the port. So uh, anyways, that's a side note. Back to IVs and butterflies. Um, so being in the right position will definitely help you, let's say, keep the needle at the correct angle and make slight adjustments to be able to, let's say, work with your left hand to get all your tubes. So let's kind of shift towards a butterfly. So make sure you're in a good position, especially you have, let's say, four tubes to switch out of and fill. So make sure the patient's comfortable that they're not going to move because let's say if it's a hard stick and you finally get flash and then you're going and you have three more lab tubes to go and then they move and the needle just pops right out of the vein. Yeah. So make sure they are comfortable. Make sure you are comfortable um, that you're able to stand up, that you're not hurting your back or anything like that so you can make slight adjustments and you're gonna be there for a while. Sometimes, let's say when I do, uh, some cultures, sometimes the blood return is really slow and it's like drip, 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 okay. And I think you have to have, I believe, 10 mils in each bottle. Um, so at that point, what I do, you see my three fingers, and they'll say this is a person's hand, and I have my hands, my three fingers on the patient, and I have my butterfly between my two fingers, and this is key, this is acting as like a stabilizing point for me where I can rest my hand and not move. So it not only keeps me from moving, it keeps the patient also from moving too. Let's see, when you're in there, let's say if it's flowing and it's not, go ahead. What I've noticed is pull back just a little bit, depends on how deep you went. And just look at the tube, see if there's any, if there's an increased rate of the drops falling. So uh, sometimes if it slows down and I pull back just a little bit, I can see drip, 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 drip. I'm like, hey, perfect, do not move. And I continuously communicate with the patient. Okay, don't move, I have it. We're just gonna fill up the blood. Like don't even cough, you know? Um, uh, so I, I do that, side note here. Make sure that you are safe and you keep yourself safe. Um, what I've seen people do 
uh, is take it out, put the needle down. I'm like, no, cover your needle, okay? So you will learn. Learn, practice with your equipment. There are times where I think we got some new butterflies. It was a new, whole new system or something. And I'm not gonna open it for the first time in front of the patient and look like I don't know what I'm doing. So open a, a pack for yourself and find out how the safety mechanisms work and all of that. All right, so next point is not releasing your tourniquet in time. Okay, so this goes not only for your IVs, but obviously your blood draws with the butterflies. As soon as you see flashback, release, pop that tourniquet off. What that will do is help release the pressure that you build up trying to feel and find the vein so it doesn't blow on you. There's nothing worse than getting in there and then your vein blows. So pop that tourniquet off right then and there. The more you practice, let's say you know how when you insert your IV catheter and then you're getting ready to disconnect and connect your flush, you're supposed to obviously occlude the vein so there's minimal bleeding. All right, so like I was saying, you're supposed to put your finger to occlude the vein to minimize the amount of bleeding but if it doesn't happen you will get better it's one of those things where you learn how to use both hands and i know let's say for me my right hand is dominant it feels awkward for me to do certain things with my left hand the more practice you have the better i'm having everything kind of loosened beforehand uh flushed all of that so it's just a, a seamless like pick up and and click versus like oh pick up pull it off flush it do you see Prepare yourself, um, have everything available close by. And once you're in there, make sure that you are flushing and you're getting blood return to make sure you're in the right place, okay? Sometimes I have gone in and I'm like, okay, and then it starts kind of to bubble. I'm like, no, it didn't work. So go ahead and remove that and just try again. Um, what else can I tell y'all about IVs? Then you do get better. You just can't let your mind get in the way, okay? Review the skills, look at the references and the resources that they have available. Have the, you know, memorize your steps. Make sure you know what to get. Make sure you know how all the supplies work. Be as clean and as septic as possible. You don't want to cause any infections. And then any opportunity you get to try, go ahead and take it. Yes, it's scary. And I can't tell you, the day I remember I had a patient, it's like three plus edema and um, I learned a trick from a nurse that I would always call on like, hey, I need for you to help me to get this IV. Like this guy is so puffy. I don't even know. I can't feel anything. I can't even feel anything. So what ended up, what he ended up t uh, teaching me was, uh, so it was probably like around this area. He's like, press that on the skin. Okay. And you'll see all of the extra fluid that's going to move away because of the added pressure. And if you think that's it, then you start feeling and finally you get to the point where you can feel if there's a bouncy vein there. And I remember feeling, I'm like, okay, wow, after all of that, I can feel the vein. I'm like, that's where I'm going to go. So what I ended up doing, obviously doing my tourniquet, I pressed the skin there, trying to separate the water, the, the, the fluid from away, away from that area. And obviously it takes time for the, um, for the fluid to accumulate right over it. So obviously it's a time thing. Um, I pressed, I went in, and I got it. And I was just only doing blood draw. Um, but I was able to get, I think, my cultures or something. And I was so excited because it was a heart patient, what we term as a heart patient. They're either really edematous or they really have fragile veins. And everyone's tried. And then when I went to go talk to the nurse that I always go to, they were able to teach me something, and I tried it. And it worked. So I always just, you know, ask watch other people do it and give it a shot if someone ever says hey you want to try go ahead and say yes even if you don't you don't have to try both times uh, but just give it a try and sometimes like i mentioned sometimes i'll look first many times before i even come and stick obviously there are moments if um, you're in a code or something and an IV goes bad obviously leave that to those that can probably get it quickly you want to get the medications to the patient um, as soon as possible but i believe it's any other opportunity you can try and take that so you can build that skill all right hope you guys got something out of it i wish you much success as you try and attempt and get these ivs i know it's scary explain and talk them through everything um, take the opportunity to 
look many times beforehand, grab the correct supplies, make sure it's for the right vein size and all of that. And I'm hoping that that helps you out on your IV skills. Um, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe and share the videos. Bye.